Okay, so we're going to look at uh, our second class, A1, Chapter 8, uh, object Objective 8, which is looking at uh, power. And so some of the concepts here we've seen before. So power is work by time. Um, so joules per second or watts are generally our units. Um, and we would have seen questions like this before. So we have some constant force blowing an object a uh, certain distance in a certain amount of time and how much power is required. Okay, so I've got a few things. First of all, if I want to consider how much uh, actual work is being done, so my, my work is going to be equal to a force times a distance. So um, force times a distance, in this case, what I have is a force of a thousand newtons and that's going a distance of one kilometer or a thousand meters uh, and so what I would have is a million newton meters or joules of, of work that is done. Um, if I go to look at what the power is Power is going to be work divided by time, which is going to be equivalent to a million joules divided by my time, 50 seconds, which would then be equal to um, 20,000 joules per second or watts, or if I want to make that a little cleaner, 20 kilowatts. If I look at this um, where uh, I'm not just looking at a force over a distance, um, but instead I look at a piston cylinder type arrangement, what I deal with is pressure and volume and what we saw is that there's a relationship between pressure and force so pressure is force per area uh, and uh, versus force and volume is going to be a, a length times an area and distance deals with length so I have some sort of relationship between pressure volume work and force distance work like we we saw in the past example So we know inside of an engine, um, work is created by a piston having some pressure acting on it and moving some distance. Um, power is created by that process occurring over and over again. Um, since we know work is related to pressure and volume and time is going to be related to engine speed, I can come up with an idea that power is going to have something to do with pressure volume divided by time or else if I kind of take the understanding that engine speed if it's in say rotations per minute rpm or rotations per second um, that time is already on the bottom so really pressure times volume times speed or some sort of relationship like that is going to tell me what my power is so as I add in fuel and get energy from burning that fuel creating work uh, and doing it over and over again is going to create power out for me. Uh, we saw this slide last year, so what actually a engine cycle typically might look like. So we took the auto cycle here, and uh, what we saw was that we had some areas where we created work, we had areas where we um, used up work um, or consumed work, uh, and the engine cycle never became really all that nice and clean. Um, and so for us to calculate power out of this um, becomes a little tricky because of the shape and the size of the, of the cycle diagram. So if I think about what happens inside of that cycle diagram, um, so I've got a pressure I've got a volume and uh, 
I don't know, let's say we've got some cycle and it kind of looks like this. Okay. It's up and around. Um, it becomes challenging for me to figure out uh, as I go through exactly how much work is done because pressure is changing, volume is changing, and I've got all these kind of curving lines. Um, I like nice geometric relationships if I'm calculating work. Um, you know, we've seen some in the past as just rectangles or triangles, and geometrically we can figure out what pressure volume is in those cases. Um, so what we want to do is we want to figure out a way that we can make this guy represent it by something nice and geometric. And what I have is an idea of mean effective pressure. And what mean effective pressure is, um, is, well, if we look at the words means, uh, what does that mean? Well, that's another word for average. Um, pressure, so average pressure and effective, um, just going to have to do with the uh, gauge and absolute pressures um, and kind of talk about that a little bit um, later on. Basically, what we're doing is instead of having all of my pressure and volume for this entire thing, what I'm doing is I'm saying, what is the what is the average pressure that this thing runs at? So back and forth, uh, and so basically, instead of having a cycle diagram, what I'm assuming is that I have a cycle that operates between this average pressure uh, as it moves through its its uh, pathway. And so what I end up with is if I consider that average pressure or my mean effective pressure, uh, what I've got is now uh, an area equal to pressure times a change in volume, which is equal to my work. So mean effective pressure, uh, what we consider it is the mean pressure throughout the cycle produced by us burning the fuel. And what we create is a rectangle having the same length as the essentially the stroke or the change in volume and same height as the mean effective pressure. And so Realistically, for any cycle, what I can do is I can come up with this idea of mean effective pressure to represent what happens inside of the cycle. So if I take it over the entire cycle, I don't care if I have a little bit more work produced at the front end or the back end. Uh, what I just look for is over the entire cycle, because it happens so fast, well, what is it averaged out in terms of work that's done? So then we get to the idea of power. So um, what we can consider inside of an engine is the rate of work done on the piston by the pressure in a single cylinder um, is the indicated power and what I get is an equation that kind of looks like this so indicated power is the mean effective pressure times the area of the piston times the length or the change in volume AL times n. And if we think about what these mean, um, n is going to be the number of power strokes per second. And so depending on what type of engine you have, uh, you're going to have a higher or lower number of engine strokes per second. So our typical four-stroke single acting engine would tend to have one power stroke per two revolutions. So if it was operating at 300 RPMs, we would only have 150 power strokes per minute. Okay, so let's look at the example problem from this section. So we have a four-cylinder, two-stroke diesel engine, so we'll have to think about what that means in terms of power stroke delivery. Um, 
it's given a mean effective pressure and we have some cylinder dimensions and just want to figure out what is the indicated power of the engine. So in order to find the indicated power, I'm going to need to know the mean effective pressure. I'm going to need to know the area, the length, and um, then I got to figure out how many strokes per second or how many how much power is delivered. So uh, let's start out here. So um, some stuff that I don't really know. So area is going to be equal to um, pi r squared uh, or else um, or else pi by 4 d squared. Um, so either of those guys will calculate out my area, my piston. So for a diameter or bore of 750 millimeters, so 0 0.70 meters, so pi divided by 4 times 0.75 squared, so 0 0.44 two meters squared. My length is going to be 1200 millimeters or 1.2 meters. My mean effective pressure, or PI, is going to be equal to 1200 kPa. Uh, and now let's look at figuring out how many power strokes per second. Okay, so if I look at N, um, what we're given is 150 RPM. What I want to end up getting is going to be power strokes per second. Um, sometimes I use the capital N as RPM, so just be careful on the terminology or the, the, the values that you're seeing there if you're used to using that as a unit of RPM. Just be careful on how they've written out their equation. Um, so if I look at N, um, what I have is 150 RPM. Um, and what I want to do is I want to convert this into per second. So one minute per 60 seconds is going to be equal to 2.5 rotations per second. Um, so if I think about what I need, I'm just going to kind of work it out from a unit's point of view. So 2.5 rotations per second times, and now I think about how many power strokes per revolution or rotation. So two-stroke diesel, meaning I go up and I go down, and that's all that happens for the, the cycle. So every rotation has an up and a down, meaning I have one power stroke per rotation. So one power stroke per rotation. What I also have to think about is not just power strokes per rotation, but I also have per rotation per cylinder. So because I have multiple cylinders, each one delivers a power stroke each rotation, meaning I have four cylinders. So in terms of number of power strokes per second, what I get is 2.5 times 1 times 4 equals 10 power strokes per second. So when I figure out what my indicated power is, so my power indicated is going to be equal to my mean, sorry, cross that out, my, my power is equal to my mean effective pressure times my area times my length times my 
my n value. And what that is is 1200 kPa times one uh, 0 0.442 square meters times 1.2 meters times 10 power strokes per second and what I end up with is 6,364.8 kilowatts of 